Yo what's up guys then my of a simple snippets back with another video tutorial on C++ programming especially the object oriented programming paradigm so this is yet another video tutorial on, on inheritance and this is probably like the third video tutorial on inheritance because there are many subtopics to be covered under this topic that is inheritance so if you have not watched the previous video tutorials or if you don't know what inheritance is you can see a video on the top right corner in terms of cards and you can check that video out and if you are new to this channel consider subscribing to this channel because there is a lot of information technology oriented tutorial tutorials and content coming up in 2018 and there is already a lot of video tutorials if you want you can check them out so make sure you subscribe to this channel and with that being said let's get started so in this video tutorial we'll be talking about function overriding and we'll see how it is different from function overloading so function overriding comes specifically under inheritance and it is possible only with inheritance and this is slightly different with function overloading in fact it is very different and a lot of times students get confused between the two so we'll try to first understand what is function overriding then we'll compare it with function function overloading that is we'll first go through the theory of both and we've extensively covered function overloading in previous video tutorials so you can check out in this playlist or i'll just drop a card you can see on the top right corner so we've already covered in detail about function overloading so this video is majorly focusing on function overriding so for we'll first as i mentioned we'll first go to the theory aspect and then later on move on to the program example so let's first quickly recap over what function overloading in c++ is so function overloading is a feature in c++ where two or more functions can have the same name but different parameters and function overloading can be considered as an example of polymorphism so so polymorphism is another topic to be discussed but right now just for the sake of understanding understand that we are using the same name but it will have different parameters so there were certain conditions for function overloading so as i mentioned the rules for overloading are as follows so an overloaded function must have different type of parameters and the type is referring to the data type then the second one is the different number of parameters so if the data types are same then the number of parameters should be different or if both of these are same that is the number of parameters is same and the types are also same then the sequence of parameters should be different so if there is int and float the next function which is having the same name should have float and int so you can see the six different examples over here the first one is a basic function without any arguments then we have one argument then we have one different argument then we have two argumented function then we have two arguments with different type of parameters and then we have different sequence now all of these have the same name that is print and all of these can exist simultaneously inside one C++ program so these are the basic rules and you can see that in function overloading we, we do not have any object oriented concept so it is totally independent of object oriented programming and you can see that there is no inheritance also required so if you have seen that function overloading video that was especially for the procedural part so now let's see what is function overriding so let me just read out the theory and it will be very clear because I've put it in very simple terms so if derived class defines same function as defined in the base class it is known as function overriding in C++. Now in inheritance we know that we have a base class and the properties of that base class especially the properties inside the public and protected section are being inherited in the derived class. So if we create one more class which is derived from the base class we get all those properties. So it is saying that if a derived class defines same function so say for example we have a function in the base class and then again in the derived class we again recreate that function and give it a different functionality. So that case we it is a case of function overriding. So let's read the next point. So if you create an object of the derived class and call the member function which exists in both class so the function will have will be there in both the classes but in this case the member function of the derived class is invoked by default and the function of the base class is ignored so what what does this help achieve so this helps and enables you to provide specific implementation of functions which is already provided by its base so now this point will be more clear when we actually go ahead and code and see a basic program so i'll show you a basic program wherein we'll try to do the function overriding concept and implement it programmatically so let's see a diagrammatic representation of function overriding so you can see over here we have a class base then we have public void get data inside this base so this function is inside the public section then we create a derived class and we publicly inherited base now we already know the different modes in which inheritance can occur that is the different access specifiers and i have a complete separate video for this so you can check out that in the description or you can see a card on the top right corner as well so in the derived class you can see there is one more same function so there is void get data and there is void get data over here also now note is that there are the rules of function overloading does not apply over here so in the rules of function 
overloading said that there has to be different number of parameters if the name is going to be same or there has to be different sequence or different type but here you can see the function is exactly same but just that it is a case of inheritance so here what we are doing is we are recreating that function and giving it a new functionality so say for example here it would be c out and i print some value but here i want to print some different value so in the main function when i create the object of derived class and i, I say object dot get data you can see this solid line that is the function inside the derived class is called and not this one now you can give a call to this function also because since derived class basically inherit, inherits that function what if you want to actually call this function so there is a case and there is a way to do that so let's see the next slide so again the same thing we have class base we have get data then we have derived class which is publicly inheriting base so we have one more get data inside this but notice this line you can see base colon colon get data now this double colon is called the scope resolution operator and by using this what we are doing is we are giving a call to the get data of the base class so essentially get data is called of the derived class so when i create an object of derived and i say obj get data this get data is called but inside that i'm calling get data of the base class so it is like a two step process and so indirectly we are essentially calling the base class get data function so the reason why it is called overriding is you can see that since the member function is the same but get data of the derived class is called over the get data of base class we can say that this function is overriding this function so that is why the name function overriding comes into picture okay so this was just the basic theoretical explanation let's go ahead and try to create a basic program and try to implement the function overriding concept okay so quickly open up your day c++ id or whatever id that you use for coding in c for c++ programming and let's just create a class so i'll say class my base class or my base okay my base class and let's try to keep it simple i just will create a public access specifier inside that i'm going to create a basic function i'll say void print message or let's let's try to make it more uh, what we say let's try to relate it more with the real world scenario what i'm going to do is i'll create a class animal okay and inside that i'll create void make sound so let's assume that every animal makes some noise or makes some so sound and inside that we'll just see out and print a message saying animal sound so just trying to be or just trying to relating to the real world scenario now let's keep this class and let's try to save this first i'll say fn overriding save it and now let's try to create a new class so i'll say class dog and perform inheritance so colon operator i'll say public animal so i'm publicly inheriting animal class and creating new class which is dog from this animal class inside the public section of this newly derived class i'll again create one more void make sound but inside this we know that a dog barks so let's try to print that message dogs bark okay so so this is our newly derived class let's try to create one more derived class so we can create multiple derived class and we've seen the different types of inheritance that is the multi level multiple hierarchical so this is basically a case of hierarchical inheritance so i'll say class cat again publicly inherit animal class inside the public section i will again create the same function make sound now i'll say see out cats meow or make some different sound so we've created two classes and we derived them from this animal base class so this is essentially the base class and these are the derived classes derived class 1 derived class 2 now let's move to the main function so first what i'll do is i'll create base class object so i'll say animal a1 and i'll say a1 dot make sound and i'll say see out endl so to take the cursor on the next line then i'll create dog d1 d1 dot make sound again print as endl to take the cursor on the next line and cat c1 c1 dot make sound okay 
So since we've individually created functions for each of these uh, derived classes and we also have the base classes own function, we should get these individual responses and let's try to save this and try to execute this compile and run. So there you go, you can see three different outputs. Animal sound is what I printed over here. Then we have dogs bark and cats meow, right? So what we essentially did over here is we performed method overriding. So the first was our base class, that is the animal class. The second class was dog, which was derived out of animal. But if we hadn't created this function, so let me just show you what would have happened. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll comment this out. and save this and let's try to again compile and run now. So there you go. You can see we got two times printed animal sound. So because we do not have our own definition inside the derived class dog, this function came as it is over here since we did not provide our own version. So this gives us flexibility to modify the code in the derived derived function or derived class. Now this was more related to the real world scenario, but not specific to a uh, practical application but say for example you have a class named shape and inside that you have a function which gives you area of that shape now you create three different shapes say for example triangle rectangle and rhombus now the formula to calculate area for these three different shapes is totally different right so what you can do is in the main shape class you can create get area and then just print out some message but inside the individual derived classes that is the rectangle class the square or triangle class or the rhombus class inside those individual classes in the get area for those individual classes you can apply those formulas individually separately for each of these so it might not be that every formula would be same so that flexibility is provided in method overriding okay so this was just a simple example for function overriding and I hope you have a clear idea of what function overriding is and how it is different from function overloading and we also saw a practical example so we'll see one more example if you want and you can let me know in the comment section that if you need more examples on function overriding and its uses so we'll see a complex program if you want but you gotta let me know in the comment section so yeah that's it for this video guys I hope you understood the entire concept of function overriding if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed make sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.